Welcome to Conversations with Eugene Ebner, powerful talk that will change your life. Hi, welcome to my webcast. Today I'm really excited to have singer-songwriter, who's a very inspirational human being and artist, Miss Amy Barbera. Hi, Amy. Hi, Eugene. I love you, and I'm so happy to be on your show. I we love you, too. <laughs> we go Our, way back. We do go way back. Yeah. Like, we met in, what, 2007, actually, on I MySpace. Think, yeah, isn't that funny? And I came to Colorado, which I want to come back. Yeah, you did, and, I, and that was 2009, and we celebrated your birthday here. Yes, and it's And we're going to have to have you come back and perform. Yes, I, I'm going to have to make that work, but it's timing, as you know, right? Yes. Everything's <laughs> timing, yeah. It is. So I know that you've been releasing so many wonderful projects, performing a lot lately, and what I want to kind of talk about to start off with today in our conversation is about this music that you're putting out to the world, Breath of Angels, which is an inspirational collection of music. Most of it, I understand, or all of it, you've written and you've produced with Ben Bag ba Bagby, excuse me. And Denny right. Tate. And Denny Tate. Do you know and, Denny? Oh, my God, I love Denny. Denny. Denny did most of the album, him and Ben, but Denny did most of the songs. Hey, Denny. Hey, Denny. <laughs> we love you, Denny. <laughs> Yes, it's Denny's very talented. Yeah. So how did you decide to not only put this together on a CD to help encourage people to come to a centered place, to connect back to spirit, to God? What was your driving force for this, and how did this come about? Well, I was actually in the middle of doing a whole different album. I was going to do more of a pop inspirational album with dance songs and pop songs. And then I started taking a healing yin yoga class. And Craig, the teacher, was almost like you were in therapy. And he would lay there and he'd say, now just be and don't let anything, don't worry. Like he was basically tell you, you know, everywhere you go, you have to be at your best behavior. You have to be perfect. You have to, you know, at jobs, you have to have job performance. And he said, this isn't a place where we perform. This is a place where you can just let it all go and just relax. And it was so relaxing, and you got so close to God that the Spirit of God talked to me during his classes and told me to do a healing meditation album. Because so many people, especially right now, because of everything with the Internet, and you're always kind of wanting to put up things and showing people you're doing everything, you just don't really rest a lot. And uh, I, I, I like a lot of the Christian ministers, and one of them has been talking about resting in the Lord, how you can rest in the Lord and let him do your thing, like do what you have to do, but let him open the doors rather than you fight for it. So I wanted to create an album where people could rest to, kind of relax to, and I wanted to make it kind of diverse with different sounds. And that's why when I decided to work with Denny, he's very creative, and I knew that whatever he would do would be amazing. So... Well, all the songs are so beautiful, and I love the diversity within the CD. You oh, you know I always love Paint, um, you paint Me a Rainbow. Oh, yeah, I'm that sorry. Way. I don't know why the titles are not in front of me, but I, and I love just the way that you positioned all of the selections in order. I feel like it takes you through a journey. Yeah, that's what my goal was. So, like, when I, I did the first three, they were more like the ballad. Well, the opening one was the title of the album. And then those three in the middle, like Love Yourself, which reminds me of you. <laughs> the, the I love, love that one. That's <laughs> one of my favorites. Yeah, because you're always talking about Love Yourself. So I want it, Denny put a lot of African beats, a lot of the Moroccan sounds and the, the chanting and stuff. And I wanted to, so all those are back to back. And then I kind of ended it with, you know, I wanted to end it kind of more upbeat. So we ended it with Paint Me a Rainbow. And Denny did that amazing remix. He did like five remixes of Paint Me a Rainbow. And Ben actually loves Denny's remix of that, so. Yeah, the remixes that Denny puts out there, he's so creative. He did one for me, God, probably back in 2010. Mm -hmm. And I love his work. He's such a sweetheart. Ben is so talented. They're both such kind spirits, and so are you. So the three of you together are a spirit powerhouse. Yeah, and it was perfect. You know, there's no, there's just always love between all of us. And Ben loves Denny, and Denny loves Ben, and they kind of work together. Perfect. Yeah. How how long did that process take you? Gosh, over a year. 
from the time that God spoke to me, originally I was just going to take songs like Make Me a Butterfly, the healing song, and just do meditative remixes. But as I was going, and we were sending Denny just the lyrics and then having him create whole new music behind it, um, I started writing originals like Breath of Angels. And I, I was just about complete, and I'm in the shower, and I said, I need to have a song with angels in it. The title of the album is Breath of Angels. And I absolutely love Breath of Angels, what Denny did. And we just, I just sang those lines. Uh, ben sent him the, the, the raw vocals, and then he came up with that. I just love what he did, everything, you know. But the whole process was a year. And then the, I had a CD release party, which was like planning a wedding. So oh. I know how to plan a wedding now. And that was about six months to a year of planning. So all of it was over a year. It's amazing. I don't think a lot of people realize how long projects can take you know i remember hearing recently that uh, hamilton uh lynn manuel Miranda took him seven years to write this musical oh yeah you know so artists it takes time because it's a process and as you know as i'm an artist as well we can be very particular and we want yeah. we have a vision and we want that vision to come out the way it's meant to but as you talked about god speaking to you spirit speaking to you it, it's you're allowing it to flow so mm -hmm. it's like you're using your vision but you're allowing it to move through you with yeah. the higher power and yeah. I, if you don't mind I'd like to talk about that because what I appreciate about you all these years that I've known you is that you are very public about your love in your faith and God and Jesus and your foundation but you're also not judgmental you don't look down upon anyone if they believe differently you spread love you're strong in that why do you think you're so accepting like that uh, because of the example of Jesus and that and that's why I'm so upset about everything going on right now in the world especially you know all the fighting with the police officers and the African Americans and it just breaks my heart because I'm like, no one's being Christ-like, <laughs> you know, if they were really being like, you know, his example of loving and accepting all people. And back in that time period, I mean, he hung out with the lepers and the, and the, and the prostitutes and everybody looked down on him. Um, but that's the way we're supposed to be. And it's about really in the end, it's all about love. So, I agree. And unconditional love. And, you know, like some people might not believe my, like me, but that doesn't mean that, you know, you can't show love and that you, and that they, you know, if you show love, miracles can happen. You know, it's all, it's really all about love in the end. I agree. And you know, more of my belief system is that I feel that, that God and Jesus are one and that they are, they are love and they that we're love. part of that. and We are love. So to me, I try to, um, and intend on putting out there that, we're all connected and that we're all in a universal place of love because being openly gay, not that that's a huge identity of me anymore in the sense that I have to prove it is what yeah. it is. It's who I am, but it's not all of who I am. And I think, and I don't want to get too much into this because everyone again is where they're at. I used to feel like I had to prove and I had to say I'm worthy and I'm okay because I was bullied and I was ridiculed and I was looked down upon, unfortunately, by the church and by Christianity terrible. many yeah. times. But for me, what the more I've loved myself and the more that I've connected to what I believe in to God, and you know what? I kind of like the word for me. For some reason, it resonates with me as I think of God as source, and that's how I look at it. And I think of Jesus as like my friend yeah that's the way you're supposed to not like oh my god i'll never you know i just said oh my god that's fine <laughs> <I didn't mean laughs> it like but what i mean by that is i think so many people put jesus in a place that they feel that they can't ever connect to or a pedestal or and i think it separates us and that's no, just my no, opinion no but it that's what i love about you is that you're you're inclusive and you're accepting of everyone and you share love and you love everybody, whether they're black or white or men or women or gay or straight or whatever. 
Yeah, and some of my biggest like supporters are the people that don't believe in God, believe it or not. <laughs> it's unbelievable, you know. One of my producers back in the day, Oz Marlin, he's the one who kind of started me on my journey, even before I met Ben, it was actually from Turkey, and he was atheist. And we worked so well together. It was so <laughs> funny because I'd say, oh, I think one day you're going to, oh, you know. But it was so funny because we just got along, and we wrote, beautiful, we wrote God's Special Angel together, my Christmas song about Jesus, <laughs> which it was so funny, you know. And people are like, hey, you know, other Christians, like, I would never work with an atheist or I said, well, that's not me. I mean, I've learned more from the people that aren't openly believers that have different faiths, and they've been more kind than actually the believers, which makes me very sad. So, But I do have a lot of Christian followers, too, that are wonderful. Of um, course. I just, yeah. yeah, I just had a guy write me whose mother passed away from cancer. I believe he's gay. I'm not 100% sure, but I think he's gay. He wrote on my Facebook, I mean, my wall, so it's openly on my wall. And uh, he, he didn't believe in God, and he said from me being so kind to him and his mother as she was dying, and he said he played one of my songs one day at his fun at mother's funeral, that now he's opened his heart to God. It made me, like, cry. Um, and also, he's struggling with cancer right now, too. So uh, he wrote that just a few days ago. If you scroll down, you'll see it. Just And then, like, two days after that, I got an email um, from Carrie Nash's dad. She just passed away from cancer. She battled it since she was a teenager. And he wrote me, we were going through Carrie's stuff, and we found your album, and we found things pertaining to you, and I wanted to you know that you made a difference in our life. And that was like two days apart they wrote me, and I was like ready to cry. So that's really really what it's about, you know? It is, Amy. It's And it's touching one person at a time. Yeah. And speaking of being an artist, I know how hard you work. I know how you continue to create and put it out there. And you have that strength with your belief and your faith and your love. What would you say to another artist that admires you? How do you keep going? How do you have the strength to keep putting it out there and the energy that you have? I guess because I know this is my calling and purpose in life. And to be honest with you, like I go through very hard times of discouragement because, you know, I'm doing all this and... I want things to happen more, you know, bigger, and you know, I want to be able to to let go of certain things so I could just focus 100% on what you know my calling. But it's just something inside of me that keeps me going. Like this is my purpose, and like, you know, like Mr. Nash writing me, or you know, somebody writing me telling me that's like God uses that to encourage me. Yes, you're doing the right thing, you know, and it's fulfilling, you know. Like I have my relationship with TC, and I love him, and I know I, that's what I love about your posts. Like, you're very happily married to a wonderful, beautiful man, but yet you still realize, okay, this person just doesn't make who I am. And I like that about you because a lot of people think, oh, I'll be finally fulfilled if I'm with somebody. But I am fulfilled with him, but my main purpose and what gives me more joy is doing my calling because in the end, it's just between me and God, you know, ultimately in the end. And, I love uh, what you just said. It yeah. hurts <laughs> me because I completely resonate that way and understand and thank you. Thank yeah. you for what you said, but I think this is very important for anyone that's viewing this right now to realize that this feeling complete and feeling fulfilled is, is connecting to what you believe in. It's coming from within, which is love. Whether you call it God, love, source, universe, it's that is where the true fulfillment comes. And other people, material things, fame, fortune, those things are all wonderful. These are experiences in this world that we get to enjoy while we're alive and human beings. But the challenge is when we think that something outside of ourselves is going to make us feel complete inside. That, that's yeah. the mistake that we make. A lot of people. And I love that when you put those posts up because you have such a good relationship and you, you guys have so much in common, and Thank you're so much in love. And, but yet, you still are like, you know, my, my self-esteem is, you know, you, you, you talk about that a lot, and I love that. And I love what you put up the other day, even though, you, because of everything going on with the presidential election, and you said, you know, I, I respect and love the Trump supporters just as much as the Hillary supporters. And I love that. I thought that's so amazing. That shows you have a really good heart, and that you really understand what's going on, you know, instead of all this fighting, it's just, I've never seen so much fighting ever, not just in, 
worldwide with you know everything going on all over the world but in, in, in within our country as well it's very sad it's very challenging to see and thank you i feel like what you just touched on with the presidential election here in the united states i feel that we have a lot of division going on like you said and there's a lot of people lashing out and i think what people if they could step back for a moment and realize that the more we try to defend or react to what is occurring, we only just amplify it and create more of that. If yeah. We, and that's what, why your CD is perfect right now, Amy, in yeah. the world. It's perfect because, and timely. Yeah. Because this is, what, this is what I encourage people to do because this is what I continuously work on myself because it's a journey is going within and calming ourselves down and centering and realizing that there can be all this chaos out amongst us mm -hmm. and outwardly, but that it's really about centering in love and allowing things to unfold. It's very, it's very challenging, though, I know, because you know we get triggered. We're human yeah, and we get triggered and we want to defend and we want to yeah. prove our point and yeah. our point is right. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, I try to be careful what I put up on Facebook. I, I always want to, or anywhere on social media, I, you know, I don't, or how I react to somebody's posts. Sometimes I'll just see it, and I'm not going to say anything. Uh, because I just, sometimes things can start a whole big anger thing on a, on a post. And, you know, and it causes a lot of stress, and then back and forth. So I just try to stay away from that. Like the other day, I had a friend who had a beautiful post up outside of the convention. It was a police officer and three African-Americans, and they were trying to preach the love of God. Rather, they were, they were trying to bring everybody together. And it was just a video of this, police, this Caucasian police officer, and they're in a circle praying. It's actually on my wall on Facebook. And, and he had a thing that just said love on his, the, the one African-American guy had a thing that said love on it, the, the sign. And they prayed together, and the police officer just started crying. And then they were all hugging, and I, I could not stop crying. It was only like a 30-second clip. You could barely hear when he was praying, but I just thought, wow. And this was outside the convention center this week because they were so, they had so much police and security. They thought, and this was a group of African Americans that were trying to say, okay, we're not here to promote any agenda. We're just here to promote the love of God. And it was so beautiful. And I, I, I put it up and people have been really touched by that. So I'll put something like that up or something, you know, about what I'm doing. But I try to be very cautious about what I say and what I put up. Well, you you're do. the same way too. Uh, we both do, and I really appreciate that in you. And right now, we're both encouraging, again, anyone that's viewing this, try it out. Put love out there. Yeah. The more we put that out there, it, it's one person at a time. Yeah. And the more we can go within again and connect to Source, Spirit, God, whatever you believe in. And if you are coming from a place where you say, well, I don't believe in God, well, then connect to the energy of love. Because yeah. We are love. We, we are, are love. light. Even though we can be angry and we can be resentful and jealous or all these human emotions that arise, we are human. Those yeah. are not truly who we are on a core level, right? And yeah. so, Amy, I kind of want to talk a little bit now back to your music and your projects. What do you have coming up? What would you like to share with everybody? Yeah. Well, I have my very first music video we filmed it two years ago and i put it on hold during the whole album my breath of angels let me show you <laughs> yay I, I just i just decided okay i'm going to take all last year and just focus 100 percent anything that i was doing outside of that so we did film it we filmed in four locations it's finally edited to the completion but i have to meet with ben and one other video editor just there's one little section i need and then i have to have ben add the credits in because he didn't do the big editing in the video but so that's coming, and it's beautiful. And I did a, we did it, believe it or not, we filmed a first scene in the graveyard, in a vintage graveyard in Palm Beach. I'm in a vintage, two vintage outfits. So it's, I, I, it's to make me a butterfly. So I wanted to, because it starts out sad, so I wanted to have it. And it's not, I'm not in the dark in the graveyard there, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> the video is very beautiful, and it's filmed in 
it has it goes into different locations. I'm in the graveyard, then in the chanted forest, the red gown with roses on my head, and then we're on a mansion on a beach, and I even swim in the gown in a pool. So, <laughs> kind of like <laughs> I love it. That wasn't my idea either. The girl April who does my art direction, she says our last take, you're going to get in the pool because we were at a mansion and we were at the ocean. So I'm running around with butterfly balloons and. And I said, I'm not getting in the pool with a gown and my hair. And she said, and it, the, it's the most beautiful scenes of me floating in the pool with a gown and swimming under the water. <laughs> so that's coming up. I also, believe it or not, I recorded a 1940s style love song that I wrote for TC. I call him Sweet Pea. Yay. Name. And I decided I wanted to do it in a completely different style. We did an Ella Fitz jazz style. And I came up with the lyrics and melody, and I went to this producer named Kiskity, who's amazing. She's from England, and she's blind, but she's a genius. Sang my idea. She sat at her grand piano, knew exactly what to do. She brought, we have a real drummer on there. It's all authentic. We did it 1940s all the way with no, she didn't even, she doesn't believe in any kind of the stuff they use today, like the pitch changer. It's, and, it's, and I couldn't believe it, because you were not going to believe it's my voice. And she said, Amy, you're really good at this style. I've never done it, but it's that old 1940s Ella style, and I'm releasing that, and I'm having a photo shoot coming up in August with that, where I'm going to be like a vintage red, black, and white polka dots, cutesy type, so that's coming up. Oh, uh, and you're so creative, and I what I love about you as an artist is not only your beautiful voice, what you write, what you put out there, but you're so good at styling, you're so good at finding the clothes and the accessories that really make it a whole package. And that's what a true artist does, especially now in our world with social media and how visual we are. So I remember when you were here with me and we went to all the different like thrift vintage, stores. Yeah, thrift stores and vintage my stores. Thing in the world. Yeah. Yeah. And you are so good at picking out these gems. It's amazing. Oh, everything I wear is thrift. Everything. Even my decorations at my CD release party, if you saw that, all, that was all thrift. I had a company do the decorating, but they were all my decorations. And they're, they're now in my house. I have my house Moroccan. So, and then I have a song that I wrote called Jesus Set Me Free to Fly. I was very stressed out last year getting the album done. And there were things that I just felt like were hindering me. And I was just so stressed. And I would just sit in the car, sit in the shower, and I just started singing this song. Jesus set me free, please set me free to fly beyond the stars, beyond the sky. I just, it was like a song that you just want to get away. And it's probably my first real song where I really talk to Jesus and use his name in the whole song. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's from my heart. I talk about, I just, beyond my dreams, beyond my fears, beyond my tears, and, you know, just wanting to run away and just be free. And so I am recording that with Ben. Um, and I actually had a beautiful photo shoot on the beach with this gown, this flowing blue gown, which the photos are complete. I just haven't put them up yet because I, I have all these things done, you know, like the song Sweet Pea is done, but the photos aren't done. And then I have the pictures for the Jesus song done and not, <laughs> so it, but I, it's so much work when you have to put things up, you know, promoting it. And I, I, it's all about timing. So I have that. I probably should, I'm going to probably put the Jesus photos up in about two weeks. They're beautiful. You're going to flip out because we did it at sunrise on the beach. I'm up on a rock. I have this gown that's, you know, there's those flowing gowns. It's flying out. And the photographer I worked with is named Ken Henson. It was amazing. So that's coming. And then you're going to love this. <clears throat> I had an idea to write a song because people deal with the way they look on the outside called Snow White Dreams. I'm writing that with Denny. Uh, I want him to do the music for that. Um, and it's a song, it's a really truthful song uh, about how people really feel. Like, it starts out, make a wish, bite the vanity apple. Vanity, like the word vanity. Maybe then I would feel better, but inside I'm still numb, still with pain's poison, and my ugly still not going. It's about how people feel and how our society views so much on the way we look on the outside. And I use the analogy of Snow White. So in the song throughout, I talk about the apple and vanity and the mirror you know, and then it's a song, really, it's a song about accepting yourself, but it's not a pretty song. I use the word ugly and vanity and, and how people, it's like, I'm the person that feels ugly. That's basically, I'm writing it from that perspective. And, and I want to do a photo shoot. We're going to do more of like a snow white looking photo shoot. I don't know how, but 
Uh, so they're three totally different songs. They're like, what? And I'm doing that one in a, like an indie Lana Del Rey style with my voice. So here I got this 1940s, then this beautiful Jesus song in my natural, pretty angelic voice. And then that's my goal to get those three songs released this year. Well, awesome. I can't wait. And I'm sure all of your followers, friends, family, and fans can't wait. Amy, thank you so much for spending time with me today. Thank you for being such a beautiful soul, for inspiring all of us, for sharing your gifts, your talents. And I just want to let you know right now, don't ever feel that you're not appreciated or validated I know sometimes I feel this way in my own life that we do. We want things to get bigger. We want to only solely do our creative purpose. Yeah. Uh, just know, like you've said this before, it's unfolding. Yeah. Time that it's meant to be. Timing is everything. God yeah. has this plan for you. You're here to learn and grow as well, and you're an example. So keep going. And thank you, and thank you for being in my life and for being here today with me. Yes, thank you so much. And I do have some concerts coming up, and I really want to, I, it's all my heart I want to come to Colorado, hopefully next year or soon, and do something with you, you and Paul. I would love that. We so would be great. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Amy. I love you. Thank you for everything. You're the best. Love you, too. Bye-bye. Believe that you can fly, love yourself and feel all inside. Love yourself, believe that you can fly, love yourself and feel peace inside.